Hello peeps, this is Pixie and today I am bringing to you a speed drawing of a very lovely lady that I'm gonna start by giving credit to the photo reference that I'm using in this speed painting drawing. Uh, the lady in the drawing is called Jaycina, I hope that I'm saying the name right, Jaycina Almond. And the photo was taken by Ryan Stokes. Here is his website and he takes awesome pictures. I love the composition of this picture. It's perfect for drawing and practicing. I love these kind of references and this is the kind of photos you should be drawing. So, on to the next question. Why am I doing this? I was inspired by this really cool artist on Instagram. I'm showing his account here. He made a post about toggling. He gives tips on how to draw portraits. It's like his thing, drawing portraits. It has a lot of challenges. And he gave a really interesting tip on how to... Um, how do you say, how do you say it, on how to improve the likeness of a portrait, which is using this thing called toggling between the photo of your drawing or your drawing and the reference. This fights tracing, which is something many, you know, beginners do or tend to do because they really want to get the likeness of the person and we artists are very self-loading and when we start to notice little mistakes we start to go damn it I shouldn't have posted that I shouldn't have given the drawing to that person I hate myself I could have done better I could have fixed that and this technique is really good for that, to, to fix little mistakes, to, to even see the little mistakes that we have. Uh, and you can improve a lot faster with this technique as well. Uh, it's more of a training wheels kind of thing as well. It's not something that I think you should use for too long. But I think it's a good technique that... Any kind of artist in any kind of, you know, um, level can use, should use to fight the self-loading that artists have. So, as you can see, I'm starting my, I have my reference side by side on Medibank. Uh, Medibank is very useful because it has the little reference um, tab and I'm getting the shape, the general shape and I have the picture underneath my drawing in another layer so I can check if um, I'm going okay, if I have any mistakes. This is my first time using this technique and Again, I was, it's ever inspired by um, A.G. A.G. Alper, I think, I think that's how you say the username. And I'm just getting all the basic shapes. And I am putting the drawing in place so it matches. And so far, so good. And I use this, I sketch like this, some people like to go straight to color, make like color blocks. I don't know how well this could work, but maybe if you work with color blocks, you can um, put the opacity down a little. Uh, I was having a little bit of trouble with the shoulder. And please, with this technique, if you're doing digitally avoid tracing but if you do trace 
let it be one little line that you cannot get it right or like a line that can serve as reference for many other things because you will see in when I move my cursor over the reference on the side I am making lines, invisible lines, so I can um, see the angles of certain invisible lines on her face and compare and place those on the face on the drawing. I hope I hope I, <laughs> I hope this makes sense. But yeah, at this stage I already have the general shape and I'm getting it even more correctly because it was very the lines were very thick, they didn't have like a uh, definition. And the definition at this stage is kind of important because to get that likeness, etc. I also the um, the eyebrow bone is something I struggle with, and I it's something that I've noticed a uh, very few years ago that it's a very unique characteristic in some people. It can really change people's faces and how the forehead is shaped, etc. I know it's something dumb because it obviously, yeah. But when you're an artist, you start to notice, like, yeah makes sense so here I'm getting to the details or like the features of the face let's say and I normally start by doing the eyebrows because it's the thing that it's closest to the face and has less details and has an angle hope that makes sense <laughs> I was drawing them way too above the brow bone because the brow bone and that little dip when it goes into the eye was not drawn correctly. And also the nose, I was not drawing it correctly. But you will see that I'm making this invisible line and I was comparing it to the cheek and I could finally get the nose in place. So always check the surroundings of what you're drawing when you're using a reference because like that you can get a better perspective and a better understanding of the placement. It's like checking the empty areas, not just what you're drawing but the empty areas. That also works for some people. For example, instead of just drawing the nose on the face, Check the cheek area, the, you know, that triangle beneath the eye, and draw that instead. That works for some people. At this stage, I finally noticed that what was wrong, and I decided to finally fix it. And I was trying to get her eye shape down, which is shaped like an almond, which is funny because her surname is Almond. But still the eye was way too above, so I just transformed it and pushed it down, and yeah. Just got the shape in place, and it was done. I also got some eyelashes so I could, like, get the uh, way the eyelashes were direction in place. Try it. To get some details on the nose and clean up the sketch a little as I went. And something important to notice is I I do this very blocky sketching because doing parallels is a good way to draw. For example, the lineup of the nostrils and the li line um below the nostrils was a was were parallels so it helped me 
Right now I'm checking how I'm gonna draw the other eye. Which was a bit of a struggle because the other eye seems like a little bit on, like there, just there floating in space. But I could find a line that could help me and guide me. If you have a general like sense of how the face works, you can use these lines to draw portraits easily as well. And it's basically the same as the other eye, just get it in place, check if it's going well. And again, the toggle technique is very useful. As you can see, I'm not tracing, just checking what is wrong. And I'm barely getting anything wrong. Just sometimes you get the things that I get uh, crooked are noses and eyes. I get eyes like misplaced. So that's the thing I have to improve. But, oh yeah, and mouth. And mouthers. Mouthers? I don't know how to say the plural. How to say it. But, as you can see, I'm, I had a, quite a struggle with the mouth. Because, uh... I couldn't really see how big it would be on the drawing. So I had to keep going back and forth with the photo and the drawing. And to study it very well on the picture as well. And see the really dark um, shadows to guide me. The really dark shadows, surprisingly, are very helpful. They work like pinpoints, the, the corners of the mouth. So eventually I started to get it right. The lines are very blocky and very thick, so you cannot see very much of a definition here. And she wasn't looking much like herself because of her... Um, she doesn't still look much like herself because my drawing style is so, my, my sketching style is so like straight line, straight line, straight line. Her, her features are so like smooth and delicate and soft. But when I'm, when I paint her, she will start to look a lot more like herself. The sketching, um, the sketching, the sketching part only serves to put everything in place, get the likeness down, and then get to the painting part, which will come next. Not on this part, though. So, after getting the lips down, I started to just clean up the area, clean up everything, get some little details. And I'm just checking everything again to see if something's missing. And I noticed that her lip was still not right. So yeah, this is basically the toggle technique, and it's not tracing at all. You're learning how to draw, how to correct your mistakes, how to learn from your mistakes as you go, and it's really useful. I'm really thankful to have found this technique, and follow the people and check out the people that I've mentioned in this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next part, which will be the painting.
and see y'all soon and i hope this uh recording was interesting this voiceover okay bye